Crickets and locusts are responsible for a number of things in the human world already. Things like the awkward silence in comedic uh, cartoon sketches and the eradication of massive crops in Africa. But I believe they could be responsible for a whole lot more. In fact, I think they could be the key to solving the global food sustainability crisis. So what exactly is that crisis? Well, if we look at these graphs, it becomes readily obvious. We've got a rising population, meaning more people, and we're eating more meat per person. That means that the demand for meat is rising substantially, and that's an issue. So why is that an issue? Well, there are three parts to this problem. Firstly, there's land. Secondly, there's water. And thirdly, there's air. So let's look at each of those parts in turn. Firstly, our land. Essentially, we're faced with the challenge of raising food production by 20% in 15 years. And that's an issue because we're not getting any more land and to ask technology to rise to the challenge for us and give us 20% increases in food production is really quite a tall order. So one solution would be to deforest land. We know that the land that forest is on is quite productive because it produces really big trees. But the, issues w the issue with this approach is that we lose really valuable habitat and we also lose a source of carbon reuptake. That carbon reuptake is essential if we want to stave off the effects of global warming. But that's exactly the kind of solution we're seeing at the moment in places like Africa, where 70% of deforestation is due to agriculture. That amounts to about 150,000 kilometres squared in 10 years being cut down. And that's the same size as the South Island of New Zealand. So why do we need so much land? Well, really it's because of the efficiency of land use. We know that to produce a kilogram of edible beef, it requires about 620 metres squared for just one kilogram. For pork or poultry, it requires approximately 120. Yet for something like locusts, you're looking at about 50 metres squared. And that reduction in space is invaluable in a world where we require more food and more meat for more people. What about the atmosphere then? Well, we know that, the, that global warming is a, an unavoidable now and really very inconvenient truth. But we also know that 23% of the rise in global temperatures so far have been due to agriculture. And even if you don't think that sounds particularly bad, it sounds much worse when you consider that 70% of global warming contributions are likely to be caused by agriculture in 2050 if we meet our two degrees warming targets. The reason for that is broadly that it's very, very difficult to curb emissions while using traditional livestock because they produce a lot of them and it's just how they work naturally. So just how bad are they? Well, if we compare the CO2 equivalent emissions of the, the various kinds of livestock, we know that beef produces 2.8 kilograms of CO2 equivalents per kilogram of meat. Pork produces around 600 grams. But the reason that there wasn't a graph on this slide is because it was just so small for locusts and crickets that you literally cannot see them. They produce 17 and 1.5 grams respectively, which is a massive improvement in a world where warming is an unavoidable truth. And finally, our water. We know that in 2025, there will be 1.8 billion people living in regions with absolute water scarcity and two thirds of the global population living in regions of water stress. But what does farming have to do with all this? Well, it's got a lot to do with it because there are around 70% around of the planet's freshwater resources are already used for agriculture. Yet insects offer a solution here too. They use 40 to 80% more, less water than traditional livestock. And that amounts to a saving of 400 to 850 litres of water per kilogram of meat produced. That's huge, given that those 1.8 billion people I mentioned earlier have uh, less than 500 metres cubed of water per year per person to live on. So how do they do it? Well, the key is in these feed conversion ratios. So insects, you can eat, a pro well, you can actually eat pretty much the whole insect, and they, about 80% of that is digestible. 
Further, because they're not warm-blooded, unlike their traditional livestock such as poultry, pork and beef, they, they use less energy to regulate their own body temperature. So basically there's two factors. They're using less energy on structures that we can't actually digest, and they're not using energy keeping themselves warm. That means that more of what you put in comes out as food, as protein, which is really very good. And when you look at this protein composition, it's actually a lot better than it is with the traditional feeds, such as the traditional protein sources like beef. There's 2.5 times more protein, 11.9 times more pro calcium, and 2.3 times more iron in insects than beef. And why is that so important? It's important because this pale blue dot in this image here is all that we have, all that we know, and probably all that we ever will know. So it's imperative that we get the best out of our planet, and I believe that insects are the way to do that. Thank you.